Hi guys, welcome to my channel Lush Foliage. I hope you guys are fine and are safe. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about a very beautiful foliage plant called as Homalomena walsi. I'm not very sure if I'm pronouncing that correct, so I'll put the name on the screen. Now this plant can be easily misidentified as Aglonema or Deffenbergia, which is the dumb cane because it looks quite similar, but this is a completely different plant. Now this plant can reach up to 8 to 10 inches, even the size of the leaves also tend to grow bigger. Now my plant is very small over here. Now this plant is a tropical plant, it can be grown indoor and it can be grown outdoor as well. Especially if you're growing it outdoor, there are certain things that you need to keep in mind. So we will start first with the soil mix. So as I said that this plant is a tropical plant, so we need to make a soil mix that tends to retain slight moisture. But at the same time, the soil should be well draining and loose. Now, if the soil is not well draining, if the water tends to stay in the pot, then this plant can easily get root rotted. So you have to be extremely careful when you're making the mix. It has to be uh, well draining. At the same time, it should be able to retain slight moisture. So that's why uh, the soil mix that I tend to use for this plant. So as usual, my uh, succulent soil mix consists of coco peat, garden soil, sand and perlite. Now, again, I cannot give you the exact proportions of this because uh, the soil mix tends to depend from environment to environment. Uh, if you are from a dry environment, try to increase the amount of coco peat. If you are from a very humid environment, try to reduce the amount of coco peat because this completely depends upon your environment and the type of plant you're growing. Now, over here, I'm using some coco peat, garden soil, sand and perlite. Basically, sand and perlite is going to help us aerate the soil. Sand is basically going to make the soil mix well draining because otherwise, if uh, we do not have sand or perlite, the soil mix can turn out to be a little bit heavy and a lot of plants do not like a heavy compact soil mix because it becomes a little difficult for the roots to uh, grow in a very heavy kind of soil mix. So this is a usual soil mix that I use for all of my plants including foliage plants as well as uh, the uh, flowering plants as well. And uh, if you're thinking about where are the nutrients, as I said, I do not use any solid fertilizers. I only go for a liquid based fertilizers, be it my compost tea or uh, banana peel fertilizer water or onion peel water. So I usually prefer to go with liquid based fertilizers because they tend to get absorbed by the plant much faster. Now talking about watering, whenever you tend to see that the upper layer of soil around one to two inches is dry, please go ahead and water it. Now always remember whenever you are watering tropical plants, you have to ensure that you water it completely until the water starts passing through the drain hole. Please do not just miss the upper layer of soil that is not going to work out. As we have said, these are tropical plants. They like slight moisture in the soil. So we do not want the soil to be dried out completely. Otherwise that will again affect the plant. So ensure that you water completely until the water starts passing through the drain hole. Now talking about the most important thing and that is the light. Please ensure that you do not expose uh, this plant to direct sunlight. Otherwise the leaves will get burnt. Now you can either provide it with indirect bright light or medium indirect bright light. Uh, it is going to work out really well. In fact, if there is a little bit less light as well, this plant will do excellent. Now for all those people who are from extreme temperatures, because this plant uh, prefers temperature between 15 degrees Celsius up to 32 degrees Celsius. If you if your city has a temperature between this uh, range, the plant is going to do excellent. But let's say if you are from a place wherein the temperature is extreme, uh, either during summers or either during winters or probably both, then the best option is to grow them indoor. Now, when you're growing them indoor, ensure that you're keeping them in a place where they get a good amount of indirect bright light and ensure that you're not keeping it under a air conditioning vent or you're not keeping it too close to the heater. Otherwise, that will again damage the plant. Now, talking about fertilizers, please don't add fertilizers to uh, this plant during the winters, which is right now we are entering into the winter season. So please do not add any fertilizers because this plant tends to go dormant during the winters. Like most of our foliage plants, they tend to go dormant during the winters. So avoid adding any fertilizers. If you want to add any fertilizers, it has to be done during the warmer months, which is the summers. 
You can go with any liquid based fertilizer. Always dilute the fertilizer before giving it to your plant. You can do it once a month or once in two months. It's absolutely fine. But please do not add fertilizers during the winter season because they are dormant and they are resting. The propagation of this plant is pretty simple. Uh, now the best method of propagating this plant is uh, via root division. For that you'll have to take out the entire plant and then separate it via roots. Uh, I'm not very sure about stem cuttings. I haven't done stem cuttings if that's possible. But uh, if you want to have a very successful propagation, root division is the best method because uh, when you have a root division, you have a plant uh, that is well established with roots and it has uh, leaves as well. So it becomes much easy for uh, the plant to grow healthy. Uh, I'm not very sure about the other processes of propagation because I haven't tried it. But uh, root division is one of the best method to propagate this plant. Now talking about pest attack, yes, this plant does get affected with spider mites and mealybugs. So it's always better to do a visual check once every two weeks or once every three weeks. Uh, just check the underneath of the leaves because that's where usually the spider mites or the mealybugs tend to hide. If you tend to notice any kind of insects or pest, you can always go for any organic solution that you have been using for your other plants. Now, the most important part is this plant toxic. Yes, this plant is toxic if the leaves are ingested or eaten. So ensure that you keep this plant away from the reach of small children and pets. So guys, that's all about it. I hope that this video was helpful to you. If it was, please hit the like button. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing to it. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep propagating.